Okay, so we're fault locating on a uh, secondary wire here going out to the barn, or feed going out to the barn, and uh, um, we're hooking up our transmitter, and when you hook up your transmitter to do a fault locate, you want to get your ground rod the opposite direction, just like you're going to cable locate, and you want to get it away from where you plan on going or the path you plan on swinging this thing around. And you, you want to have a good ground as well. Luckily, it's been raining outside, so we got a good ground, a good conductor. Uh, because what you're trying to do is pinpoint where your current from the transmitter is leaving the cable at the fault and returning back to the ground rod. And so the ground rod is actually acting like a fault in itself. And it's a good place to get started is measuring the amount of fault you have on your ground rod because that's usually going to balance what the fault out there is doing. Scroll through your frequencies and get to 8 kilohertz fault find mode. Go ahead and turn it up to about uh, 10 or 20 percent. So we're at 20 percent right now. And then I'm just going to plug in my A-frame right here to the front. As soon as you plug your A-frame in it's going to automatically set itself up. You're going to hear the beep right there and I got my 8 kilohertz fault find on the screen and I have a decibel level. So what I'm going to do is measure my decibel level off the ground rod. Since the ground rod is kind of emulating the actual fault itself, we can put the, the A-frame about the same distance away from that ground rod as the cable would be deep out there. So the, I'm assuming it's running about four or five feet deep out there, so I'll get the A-frame about four or five feet away from the ground rod, and I have a 90.6 decibel readout right there on that cable. And then I'll just switch it to another cable. On that cable, I have, what does it say on the screen there? 91.7. 91.7, so a little bit higher. And on that one? 91. 91. So they're all really close to one another. So all three of them are probably faulted. But if you were hooking on to each one individually and you got one a lot higher than the other two, that's the one you would want to fault find on. But in this circumstance, all three of them are going to probably do just fine. So I'll just hook onto the first one there and we will go ahead and get the uh, cable located out. You want to locate it out or is it already located? Okay. So I will go ahead and just go back to eight kilohertz and locate it out just using a uh, about five milliamps of output. Eight kilohertz is one of those frequencies that is kind of middle range. It's not too low where it's not going to get to the fault and it's not too high where it's going to go past the fault. So a lot of times when you're using eight kilohertz to do your locating, you'll see your signal die off as soon as you pass the open. And you'll be able to tell also by your depth reading as you're moving along, your depth will stay nice and consistent until you pass the fault and then it's just going to drop off. So you're going to see it get a lot deeper. So you want to go around this way. This is the easiest path. Alright, so I'm using 8 kilohertz. So I'll just match up my frequency by hitting the F key and get to 8 kilohertz as well. And now we're on 8 and get around the tree here. So we're pushing out about five milliamps back there on the transmitter and right here we got it located in the weeds here and we're, we're picking up almost all five we got 4.25 milliamps so that's a good sign that we're probably not faulted between here and where we hooked up and we're measuring five and a half feet deep so we'll just move along here and what i'm going to do is kind of listen to the tone i'm in a peak mode right now i'm going to listen and make sure my tone just doesn't drop off which could represent that I passed the fault. But stop once in a while, just make sure I'm getting the same depth reading. I got a four, four foot 10 right there. My milliamp reading is a little bit lower. It's a 3.17 milliamp reading. But I will keep on going here because our depth is staying nice and consistent. And now we got some trouble. So. We have a 2.52 milliamp reading, it is lower, but my, you can see my depth reading now in the bottom right hand corner is reading 8 foot 8. That more than likely with a, a change in a depth that great in a short distance like this means you've just passed the end of the, the faulted area. And so if you just come on back 
Now we got a six foot reading here. We got a five foot reading and that's about what we were running to begin with and a four foot seven. So you can tell just by your depth reading, we got a four five right there, four five, four six, and I'll just try to stay right over the cable. Got a four nine right there is four ten, five foot, five and a half, six, and it right here is where it like just dives off a cliff and it gets really deep all of a sudden. So more than likely, this is the end of the cable or the faulted area. And now we can go back and get the A-frame, put the... Uh, okay, so we got the A-frame now. The A-frame plugs right into the accessory port in here. And I just kind of turn it until I can uh, feel it slide in. And once it goes in, you'll hear the beep. It sets itself up. And right away, we will get a decibel reading right here on the screen. And so uh, I'll just go back here just a little bit. And I want to keep the green side of my A-frame facing the same direction as the front of my receiver. So if I'm going to turn around, just turn both of them because they're acting like one device right now. The A-frame is doing all the, all the work and giving you the decibel readout on the screen. So we'll go ahead and push it in the ground and then just wait for your arrow to kind of settle down and it should point your the direction of the fault. We got a 76.5 decibel reading right now, um, pretty close to the fault. What's going to happen is your decibel reading will start off high at the beginning, move down, and then start to come back up again. So when it starts to come back up, you're more than halfway to the fault, and you kind of want to shorten your distance and, and uh, take your time and go about every five feet or less. We got a 76.2 decibel reading there. And what I'm going to watch right now is my decibel reading will all of a sudden start to go back down again. So after it peaks out, which it did right there at a 76, we're at a 74 now, which means I'm probably within about four or five feet of that fault because that, that um, cable is about four or five feet deep and it's making a nice uh, magnetic field around it that takes about four or five feet away from it uh, to peak out. So, but anyways, when I see the decibel change like that, I know I'm getting close, but my arrow's still pointing me the right direction. So the main thing is just follow the arrow keeps going forward. I got a 62 decibel reading right there. And there it flip-flopped. My arrows tell me to go back and I have a 66.8 reading right there. So I'll just cut my distance in half. 61. Arrow's still pointing back. Cut my distance in half again. And oh, I gotta be really close to right over the top of it. You'll know that because you see how low my decibels got now at 19. That means if I just go like a half and an inch, my arrow's going to flip just like that. So I was basically right on top of it right there. Now to find it left and right, I just turn my A-frame and do the exact same thing. It's telling me to go this way. Now it's telling me to go that way. It's telling me to go forward just a little bit. So go a couple inches. And now it's telling me to go back. So X marks the spot. There's your fault right there so if you need to relocate it you can just unplug and it's already on 8 kilohertz fault find mode back there so at 8 kilohertz on here we'll pick up your signal and now i'm getting tone so i'm getting closer to the spot of that cable and if you want a good depth reading just get to behind the faulted area take your depth to your last good consistent spot we're at four and a half feet right there so that fault is right where we painted and we're about four and a half feet deep so you know, right where to dig.